Okay, let's solve a trigonometric equation. So in this case, we're looking for all the solutions on this interval from zero to two pi, basically the first time around the circle. But we have this equation two sine of x plus one equals zero. So in getting started on this, we wanna isolate the sine of x on one side by itself. So sometimes students struggle with this, understanding these steps, but these steps are gonna be very, very, very similar to if I wrote this equation two y plus one, equals zero, is at least on getting started. Um, if we can solve this equation for y, it's gonna be very, very similar steps over on the actual equation that we have. So I think we've seen these types of equations a whole lot more than ones that contain signs. So we're gonna go ahead and move the one to the other side by subtracting it. That'll give us two y equals negative one. And then to get y by itself, we'll divide both sides by two. So that'd be y equals negative one half. So going back to our equation, we have two sine of x plus one equals zero. We're gonna move the one to the other side. That'll give us two sine of x equals negative one. And then isolate sine of x, we'll divide both sides by two. As you can see, very, very similar thought process in getting moved in the right direction on this and isolating the trigonometric function. The next thing we want to do after we've isolated that sine of x is think to ourselves, what angle would we plug into sine that's going to produce a negative one half? Actually, the first thing I think is which one would produce um, positive one half? Because positive one half is one of these ratios that comes up a whole lot. And hopefully we're kind of thinking to ourselves, well, I think uh, pi over six gives us a positive one half. So my thought process, I'm thinking, okay, X bar is gonna be pi, uh, pi over six. And I'm using the bar to represent a reference angle because I'm gonna use pi over six as a reference angle in the appropriate quadrants that are gonna, gonna give us sine being negative. So to help me out on which quadrants we're gonna need, I like to think of it, this phrase, all students take calculus. Uh, just reminds us all of our trigonometric ratios are positive in the first quadrant, only sine is positive in the second quadrant, um, tangent in the third and cosine in the fourth. So if tangent's positive in the third, that means sine and cosine are both negative. That's what we're looking for is when is sine going to be, be a negative ratio. Same thing with the fourth quadrant. So to locate these angles, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that pi over six as a reference angle into the third quadrant first. So I'm basically placing pi over six in here as a reference angle. And our goal is gonna be figure out which angle wraps all the way into the third quadrant that would have pi over six as a reference angle. So what I like to do in this situation is remind myself it's pi to go around this far, and I need an additional pi over six. So to do this calculation, we're gonna get x equals pi plus pi over six, or with common denominator, pi is equivalent to six pi over six plus pi over six, which would be seven pi over six is gonna be our angle in the third quadrant that gives us a negative one half when we plug it into sine. All right, next, we also wanna find one that's gonna be in the fourth quadrant because sine is also gonna be negative in the fourth quadrant. So again, you take that pi over six, we're gonna place it in the fourth quadrant as a reference angle and reference angles are always drawn to the X axis. To do this calculation, it's gonna be slightly different that it's two pi to go all the way around the circle. Our goal on this one is we wanna find the angle that only wraps this far around lands in the fourth quadrant and still has pi over six as a reference angle. So to get that value for X, my calculation would be two pi minus the reference angle pi over six. And we can rewrite this with a common denominator. Two is equivalent to 12, sorry, 12 pi over six. And our, all I did there was 12 divided by six is equivalent to this two. So I rewrote it. So we would have this common denominator between our two fractions 
And then to do this final calculation, we'll say 12 pies minus a pi makes it 11 pi. Keep the common denominator. And that's going to be our angle in the fourth quadrant that when you substitute it in to sine, when you evaluate sine at 11 pi over six, it'll produce negative pi over two. So I hope this helps out. We ended up with two solutions, 11 pi over six, and then seven pi over six. So good luck as you're working through these. First, isolate the trigonometric function, and then think about reference angles whenever possible. Good luck.